Hey everyone, I'm Mike Sattel and you have made it through the second practice test. I hope it went well. Feel free to leave some comments on this video. Brag about your score improvement if you've got some. Tell me what you think is helping, what you're progressing on. Um, and even if you didn't improve, maybe give me some feedback as to why you think you're stuck. What's, what's not working for you? Maybe I can give you some advice. There is definitely stuff that we're going to do though in step seven here and in step eight that should help you uh, clean things up. So if you, if you haven't seen that score improvement that we really wanted to see in step six on our second practice test, then we still got another practice test. So we still have a chance, but we've got to really pay attention to where we are losing those points because we are in the home stretch now. We've got to tighten everything up. We've got to really be as perfect as possible in the places where it counts. And that's why step seven is all about mastering the middle. This is a really important idea. So a lot of you are going to come out of that second practice test and say things like, I need help with the hard math questions. I'm too slow on the hard reading passages. Maybe, maybe. But in my experience, the real problem is you need help on the easy math problems. You're too slow on the average predictable reading questions. And so on that easier stuff, you need to be lightning fast. You need to be flawless, confident, efficient. That is where a lot of the points are. Most of the points are for our test. So we don't want to neglect those middle questions. The hard questions in a lot of cases are just plain hard. Some of them do become easier with strategies. Plug points into equations definitely takes a hard math question and turns it into something a little bit simpler. But a lot of them are just hard and you're going to need four minutes, for example, to sort through some of those really hard, dense reading passages. There is no shortcut. So if you want more time for the hard stuff, you need to spend less time on the easy and medium stuff. You need to master that middle grouping of questions where people start to stumble and slow down, and we really can't afford that. So you might even be getting most of these middle questions right already. That's good. But if you are hesitating for 10 or 20 seconds before you really start solving them, figuring out what to do, that's going to add up to several minutes over the course of the test. And that's those are precious minutes that you no longer have for those harder questions. And that's why the goal for this step is that right isn't always right. Okay, right isn't always right. If you are getting a question right in 60 seconds, that it takes me 20 seconds to solve, that is a failure on your part. And it's gonna cost you more points than it's gonna save, right? So you might get the points for that one question, but how many points are you losing later on because of your inefficiency? So before we start practicing with a million hard questions, which I know many of you are eager to do, and we will do that in step, in step eight, so don't worry, we'll get there. We first need to realize that success on those hard questions is really going to come from success on the easy ones. We have to master the middle. If we can't master the middle, we're not gonna make progress on those hard questions. Also because they're going to take the same skills that we need to master for these middle questions. So let's look at some topics uh, and some tasks that we wanna make sure we accomplish for this step. So, as I said, remember that this whole step is about the easy and medium questions. You have to resist that urge to skip to the harder ones. Even if you feel like you're not being challenged, you're still learning things. So if you are using the SAT question bank, you really should not be doing any of those three box questions, right? You know how they mark the difficulty as one box, two box, three boxes? No three box questions at all in this step. Stick to the one boxes and the two boxes, the easy and the medium ones. And we need to be getting all of them correct without any hiccups or stumbles. So if that's not happening, then you're not ready for the hard stuff. So which topics should you focus on? At this point, you should kind of know already for yourself, right? So what topics have you stumbled on in the past? Certainly what things were you getting wrong on the second practice test uh, that you just took and hopefully very thoroughly reviewed, especially things that you got wrong that you shouldn't have. And what comes to mind is some of the stuff we talked about like back in step two, right? Lines, quadratics, grammar, transitions, throw those outlines in there too for reading. None of that stuff really should be producing errors at this point, especially like if we're trying to think about what scores we want, right? For example, if you want to get a 700 or better in reading, you really cannot get any of the grammar transitions or outlines wrong. They need to be perfect and they need to take you probably less than 10 minutes to get them all correct, even in the hard module. So we're not just focusing on right and wrong anymore. We are thinking about things like time. Are we getting them right efficiently? So one place you can start to maybe pick this apart and kind of figure out what your specific tasks need to be to what topics to focus on is this playlist here, how to score X playlist. So 
Uh, all the videos in here kind of fill in that X with the number. So how to score 500 in reading, how to score 600 in math, how to score 750 in reading. Uh, so pick the one that kind of is the next goal above where your current practice test two scores are. Uh, these are really good for understanding how far you are from your goal, what needs to kind of fall into place to get there. And there's going to be a lot of repetition of some advice that I'm using in the study plan videos, but there's there's pieces of advice for the SAT that you could afford to hear multiple times. So it, it's a good kind of repetition of the things that are most important to get the score that you want. So I highly recommend that. And as always, the link will be in the description for this video so you can get there pretty easily. I also recommend you maybe look at one of my blue book walkthroughs. Okay. So these are different from the other practice test videos that I've done and that you've used, right? Because for the practice tests that you've taken, you should be using my videos to review them and to improve your score, figure out what you did wrong in each question. And for those, right, I have a video for every single question so that it's all segmented. The walkthroughs are one video of me taking the entire test. And I took those blue book tests. I don't have for all the practice tests, but for most of them, I took those tests uh, basically like you did. I didn't know any of the questions and any of the answers. I just, you know, the day was released. I opened it up on my computer. I turned on my camera and I filmed myself taking the entire test. So you can see what it's like for a test prep expert, an SAT expert to have a new SAT to work on. Um, so only watch those videos if you took that particular test. Don't let me spoil the practice test for you. But these are a really great way to see efficiency at play, at work. So you'll see also that I'm not always efficient. I stumble too. I have trouble figuring out what a question is. But uh, as much as possible, you want to learn from me and see how do I decide what to do on a particular question. This will also preempt some of the questions you might have in step eight, where we get into some of the harder stuff. So you don't have to do all of this, all of these walkthroughs right now in step seven. You can kind of maybe save them for step eight or kind of work on them in both steps. Basically, maybe you could just do the, watch me do the first module for reading and for math in step seven, and then watch me do the hard modules for step seven, uh, for, for reading and math in step eight. Um, it is a lot, you know, to watch someone else take a two hour SAT. I, I get that that's probably not high on your list of priorities, but if you're serious about improving your scores, seeing someone who knows what they're doing take a test is really useful. There's lots of subtle things that you can pick up watching me answer these questions. Uh, other things we can do. If we don't want to watch me, you can also answer some questions yourself. Uh, a great place to find these kind of master the middle kind of questions are the easy modules for the practice tests that you've already taken. So this is easy to find. Just go into Blue Book again, select a test you've already done, and then when it puts you in the first reading module, leave everything blank. Just leave it blank, go to the, the page where you can move on to the next module and you'll get everything wrong. And the college board will kind of say, oh, they, they're not smart enough to be in the hard module. So they'll put you in the easy module and then you'll just get that full section's worth of easy questions. You can do the same thing for math. Get you know the, all the first module questions wrong by just leaving them blank, submit them, and then it'll put you in the easy module. And now you have a whole new section to do of new questions that are on the easier side. There will still be some hard questions in there, so you will get some challenges. But because the rest of it's going to be easier, you should have more time to tinker with those hard ones. And our overall goal would be to get perfect scores on those easy modules. Now, your actual score for the test, if you submit half of it blank, is not going to be good. So don't worry about the number. But it just in terms of your accuracy and the questions that you do, yeah, you really want an entire easy module to be correct because you'll be able to do all the easy and medium questions pretty confidently and you'll have time to tinker with those hard ones. So you will get a little practice with the hard ones. In a similar vein, uh, you can also maybe take practice tests for the PSAT, specifically the PSAT 8-9 that you can get in Blue Book. That is meant for eighth and ninth graders. So the questions on the whole are generally easier. Again, there are some challenging ones, but they are easier. You'll mostly notice this in math, where maybe some topics that you've learned in high school aren't even going to show up, like some advanced quadratics. But again, you should be aiming for a perfect score. If, if an eighth or a ninth grader can do it, and you've been studying for the SAT as an 11th grader, presumably, or 12th grader for several months now, several weeks, then you should be fine with an eighth or ninth grade PSAT. So you are aiming for perfection and you should still be thinking about bookmarks and what takes you too long and things like that. Um, and, and that goes even for the questions you're doing from the question bank. The bookmark thing really matters. You've gotta be thinking before you check your answer, 
Have I proven my answer? Am I taking too long to get this answer? Is there something in here that I didn't quite remember, that I had to spend time kind of thinking about before I was able to use that fact or formula or rule or whatever? Or even if the question just feels different, feels off, feels a little strange compared to other things you've seen, there might be something to learn from that question. So if you're taking something in Blue Book, then write the, the, the bookmarks down so that you can review those questions later using my videos for the individual questions. But basically, yeah, you want to take advantage of every single opportunity to learn something new. And I feel like with step seven, a lot of people kind of skip it and, and they really shouldn't. So you want to be as thorough as possible. Every stumble needs to be fixed in order to get those 700, 750 scores. So this mastering the middle step is really, really important. Let's kind of summarize here. I do think, I was kind of just saying this, but I do think that the hardest part of step seven is admitting that you need to do it. Uh, the goal, as we said, is that right isn't always right. So if the only thing you're thinking about as you're evaluating your practice is, 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 is along one dimension, right? Am I right? Am I wrong? That's very one dimensional. That's very basic. You are missing the complexity of this test, right? Are you getting it right the right way? Are you getting that particular topic right every time? Are you getting it right quickly? Are you getting it right in a way that you will be flexible if they make a harder version of that question? Or will you just be lost, right? So start to preempt step eight a little bit where we are gonna get to the harder ones. And that's why we say here the highest priority is efficiency, okay? Can you get faster? Where are you losing time? A lot of people, for some weird reason, think that they're losing time by like the scratch paper, right? Like if I write something down, I'm wasting time. I actually find the opposite to be true. Writing something down saves me time because I don't have to keep re-remembering things that I've already solved. If I solve something, if I figure something out, it's on that page so I can free up that space in my brain and use that brain power for something else, right? This is a this is a finite space in here. You can only think about so many things at once. So the scratch paper is like a secondary brain. So a lot of people get speeded up by using the scratch paper more. So try to incorporate that. Um, but also just try to think, you know, are you losing time in the first moments when you see a question? Is it just something that you lose time with, like deciding what to do or deciding which topic matters? Are there certain rules and grammar that mess you up? Are there certain things that you have to recall that slow you down? Try to get specific. Another good example is Desmos. For a lot of people, Desmos slows them down because they don't use it in a, in a intuitive or I guess in a kind of conscious way. Basically, they get to a math question that they're kind of like bothered by and they just say, well, let's go to Desmos. But that's not a good reason to go to Desmos. Why are you going to Desmos? Every time you go to the calculator, you should have a because attached to that. I'm going to Desmos because I want to see the point of intersection. I'm going to Desmos because I want to find the vertex. I'm going to Desmos because I want to use that slider and switch between positive and negative numbers really easily, right? Those are all things that we have a plan for. If you're just going to Desmos to play around, that's where a lot of time gets wasted. So you've got to be careful with Desmos that it doesn't become just like your default move when you're slightly bothered or confused by a question. And similarly here, our lowest priority is reach. I don't want you reaching for those hard questions. Don't worry about them for now. We will get to them in step eight, leave them aside, just resist the urge to kind of get uh, ahead of yourself here. I, I, I promise there is really good stuff to be learned here in step seven. There is a lot to be gained from mastering the middle. And if you don't do that, you are not going to have a good chance at those hardest questions. So I don't have a lot of closing for this step. At this point, you should have a good rhythm for your prep. You should kind of know what you're doing. Just kind of keep it going. Keep your keep your practice regular. Keep studying the vocab words. We don't want to neglect those either. We are getting close to the end. So the more vocab words you know, the better. Uh, make sure you give this video a like. Uh, so I know you made it this far. And uh, be proud of yourself for making it this far. This is a lot of hard work. As always, I'm Mike Sattel. I will see you in step eight. And there are just three more steps left.